Hi everybody, welcome to day four, section nine three, graphing reciprocal functions. So today we are going to determine the properties of a reciprocal function and then we are going to be graphing, okay? So um, one thing we have to kind of talk about is we need to recall what makes a function undefined. So think about fractions. What number can we not divide by? Okay, and the answer is zero. So what makes a function undefined? It is when the denominator equals zero. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we are going to determine the value of x for which each function is not defined. Okay, so it is not defined when the denominator equals zero. So how are we going to figure out what the x value is that makes this undefined? Well, all we need to do is set the denominator equal to zero and solve. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, zoom in here. Okay, so in order to determine the value of x for which this function is undefined, it is undefined when we set our denominator equal to zero. So x minus one equals zero, and now all we have to do is solve for x. So therefore, we get x to be one. So it's undefined when x equals one, okay? All right, so I want you to try B on your own. Okay, determine what value of X makes this function undefined. Okay, so go ahead and do that really quickly and then uh, we can check our answers tomorrow in class. Okay, all right. So that kind of gets us into the concept we're gonna need for graphing reciprocal functions. All right, so what we need to understand is what exactly a reciprocal function is. Well, a reciprocal function is in the form 1 over a of x, where a of x is a polygon, or sorry, not a polygon, a polynomial of some sort, okay? Um, this is also known as a hyperbola, which we may get to next chapter, okay? So some general information about these reciprocal functions is that it is of the form, our general form is y is equal to a over x minus h plus k. All right, so we're bringing back our A, our H, and our K, but they kind of mean different things this time, okay? Um, and what we need to understand is that reciprocal functions have asymptotes, all right? They are constrained within certain branches, and these asymptotes are either vertical or horizontal, okay? So... Our vertical asymptote is when the function is undefined, meaning when our denominator equals zero. Okay, so what value of x makes this function undefined? Well, it is when x equals that h value. We would set the denominator equal to zero and we would solve. Okay, and then we're also going to have a horizontal asymptote. This horizontal asymptote is the value of y for which this function is undefined. Okay, and that happens to be when y equals our k value. Okay, all right, so two asymptotes. One is a vertical asymptote, the other is horizontal. We also need to talk domain and range, okay? So 
the domain of our function will always be all reals except except x cannot equal this h value because remember we said that's when it's undefined okay and then our range is going to be all reals except y cannot equal our k value okay because we said that's the value for when y or the value of y for which this function is undefined okay so just a uh, quickly looking at what these graphs could look like is um, here let's just go ahead and draw two planes right away and then we'll talk about them really quickly okay so we have this a value well when a is positive our two branches are going to be in the upper right and the lower left. So it's going to look something like this, but our asymptotes are going to be shifting a little bit. Okay? When A is negative, the, branch, the branches shift. So they'll be in the top left and the bottom right. Okay? So for now, this is really all we need to know and then we'll go on and practice some graphing. So let's go ahead to the next page and uh, see what these look like. Okay, so we're gonna get right into our first example here. We're gonna graph each reciprocal function and we're gonna state all of that information. So vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote, any values that are undefined, the domain and the range, all right? Then we'll create a table of values and graph our reciprocal function, okay? So here we go. Let's go ahead and kind of zoom in here on our information. All right, so remember, our vertical asymptotes were when x equals h. Well, what's the h value here? It's going to be 4. So our vertical asymptote is when x equals 4. Okay, the horizontal asymptote, remember, was y equals k. Our k value in this case is Two, so we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 2. Now I want to stress here when you're stating the vertical asymptote or you're stating the horizontal asymptote you're writing the equation of a line. If you just put that the vertical asymptote is 4 that's not correct. It's x equals 4. It is the vertical line x equals 4. The horizontal asymptote is the horizontal line y equals 2. Okay, so you need to state the equation. All right? Okay, so then any undefined values. Well, what value of x makes this function undefined? Well, when that denominator is 0. So it's our h value. Okay, so it's undefined when x equals 4, and it's undefined when y equals 2. This will help us with our domain and our range. Okay? So our domain is based off of our h value, based off of that undefined value. So it's going to be all reals, but x cannot equal 4. That's when we said it was undefined. Our range is all reals, y cannot equal 2. That's when we said it was undefined. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create a table of values before we go ahead and plot. Okay. So, I'm going to shift over a little bit, and we're going to create our table of values. So, we've got x, we've got f of x. Now, this vertical asymptote is essentially going to create two branches for our graph. So, what I like to do is I like to put the x value that's undefined smack dab in the middle of our table. Okay, so we know that that's undefined. That is where our vertical asymptote occurs. Okay, and now I just choose two values on each side of my vertical asymptote so I have enough points for each branch. So I'm going to choose when x is 5 and when x is 6, and then I'll choose 3 and 2. All right, and now we're just going to plug in and see what we get for f of x. All right. So when x is 6, 6 minus 4 is 2, 
2 over 2 is 1, 1 plus 2 is 3. When x is 5, 5 minus 4 is 1, 2 over 1 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4. Okay, when x is 3, 3 minus 4 is negative 1, 2 over negative 1 is negative 2, plus 2 is 0. When x is 2, 2 minus 4 is negative 2, 2 over negative 2 is negative 1, plus 2 is 1. Okay, so now we've got our table of values. Okay, but the first thing that we ever graph or we ever plot are going to be the asymptotes. Okay, so let's go ahead over here and draw in our vertical asymptote when x equals 4 and our horizontal asymptote when y equals 2. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of zoom in on my graph here for a second so I can try to get a nice line. So when x equals 4, we've got this vertical line. Okay, and we have a horizontal line when y equals 2. All right, and now we're ready to go ahead and plot some points from our table so that we can get our branches. Now, one thing you should look at is what is the a value? Our a value is 2, which is positive, so our branches should be in the upper right and bottom left compared to our asymptotes. Okay, so if we plugged in the points correctly, that's where they should be. So when we're plotting 6, 3, oops, sorry, that's 5, 3. All right, 6, 3 is going to be here, and then 5, 4 is going to be there which means this branch is going to follow these asymptotes. It does not cross them, and we're, con we're contained in that upper right quadrant. Okay, we'll plot the point 3, 0, and 2, 1, and then we just follow along the asymptotes going through those two points. That wasn't so great. Let's try that again. All right, let's plot those points. There we go. Okay, so we never cross the asymptotes. We have to create a table of values. The rule of thumb here, let's say two points per branch. If you put the undefined value for x right in the middle of your table, you just pick two points on each side of that and that should cover your branches just fine. Okay. So, I want you to go ahead and try this uh, second example here, all right? After you give it a shot, uh, take a look and see what I got, okay? Okay, so this is what I got for the stop sign, f of x equals negative 1 over x plus 1 plus 3. Our vertical asymptote is going to be x equals negative 1. Remember that x equals horizontal, y equals 3. The undefined values, those match our asymptotes. Our domain, x cannot equal negative 1. Our range, y cannot equal 3. Check your table, all right? Be careful because we had that negative 1 up in our numerator. If you have any questions with these graphs, make sure you bring them to the table tomorrow. Otherwise, have a great night. Bye.